night, Lord, we restored my spine. Knees, pain is leaving your toes, your joints, arthritis is leaving your body, rheumatism is leaving your body, the healing and noise moving in your life. My guest says that she has been watched by aliens since childhood. They told her she had been selected to teach the world about the new age, and they gave her strange powers. You can be a Christian and practice witchcraft as well. And the lung issue that night, I thought, go to the hospital or go to the meeting, and I said, I'm going to the meeting. <laughs> A year ago, I made a video exposing what I described as the most corrupt church in Pensacola. It's a faith healing church that preys upon the vulnerable and gullible. I talked about the leaders of this church, Christian and Robin Harfouche, and the miracles they perform, and their history of uh, exaggeration. Robin Harfouche, for example, has an entry on her website that says that 23 doctors told her she would never be able to walk again. But in an interview, she said that she was always able to walk. I, I could shuffle, you know, like, walk a little bit. I discussed their school, the International Miracle Institute, and how they claim it's accredited by the Accrediting Commission International, which, by the way, is a fake accrediting agency that is not recognized by any governing body as legitimate. Some members of the congregation found my previous video, began commenting on it, and spreading it around with other members of the church, so I want to address some of those criticisms in this video and hopefully rectify them. However, most of the criticism I had was directed at me personally and not really at any of the issues I brought up. I was warned not to talk ill of God's holy, chosen, anointed people. I was told I would burn in hell for speaking against the leaders of this church, and that because I was talking against the prophetic Harfouches, I was a vessel of darkness. Admittedly, it's a decent heavy metal band name, but I'm more of a station wagon of indifference. To them, it came down to my lack of faith in the leaders of the church, so they could just disregard all the evidence that I brought against them, claiming I don't understand holy things. While I'm not sure my standing on holy things, I am a Christian. My name is Supreme Leader, Grand Master, Apostle Doctor, Jedi Holden Hardman. I am a Christian who believes Jesus was the Son of God. I understand and accept the aspect of faith that goes into believing that. I am, however, against blind faith and willfully ignoring evidence. There's no shame in changing your stance, be it political or religious, based upon new information. But there is shame when being presented with new information and retaining your previously held belief because it goes against your narrative. In this video, we're going to talk to some people who used to go to the church but no longer attend. We're going to get an inside perspective on why they left. I'm going to address the concerns of some of my commenters who do attend the church. The Number one criticism being that I did not personally attend. I don't honestly believe this would have changed anybody's mind that actually goes there, but I did want to go to the church, if nothing else, to silence this criticism. We're going to re-examine the leaders, their miracles, and why this church is a cult in our own backyard. The first thing I wanted to do with my follow-up video was attend the church in person. This was, by far, the biggest criticism from members of the congregation that commented on my previous video. While I did originally intend to visit the church in my first video, the only reason I was going to go was to try and film some miracles, until I realized that they uploaded them themselves, so for that reason I didn't think I had a need to go. Clearly, this was a make or break issue, so this time, I went. I was a bit worried about attending the church this time, since my previous video made me a little bit infamous in their community. If you type in their church name into Google, my video is the very first thing that pops up that exposes them as frauds. <laughs> I do get text messages constantly asking me to attend special church functions. You know how they got my phone number? From when I called them in my other video. And I was trying to see if there's any type of documentation or any medical records. They took my number, applied it to their call list, and have been spamming me with text messages and phone calls for over a year now. I even tried calling them back to hear the prophetic word that God had to tell me that I could only hear if I called Harfouche Ministries. Hey, uh, I just got a text message a little bit ago saying that I have a personal word of impartition and a blessing. I was just calling about that, really. Well, we did we did send an email from Dr. Hosush, um, and it had a, uh, a prophetic word in it, so that may be the text message that you got. Okay, I didn't get any email, so that's why I was calling. Uh, we can resend it to you okay. there, um, if you didn't receive it, so we'll make sure to get that over to you. Okay, that sounds good. Last time I waited for an email for like 
weeks and never got anything. And okay. she just confirmed my email. All they did was verify the email that they already had on file of me and said that they would email me what God had to tell me. They never did. Also, members of the church invited me in the comments. And because I'm a spiritual person, I know that the miraculous is possible. People might actually get healed. The only difference is every time they show something on, online or in their videos, it's always something unverifiable. It's my shoulder, my back, something inside me that you can't see, but just trust me. They even have a video of a woman being healed of a tumor. Loose. Let go. She never checks it out afterwards, and we just take Harfouche at her word that this tumor is removed. I guess she never has to go back to the doctor to get a checkup. And that brings me to my point of this video. It's not to discredit Jesus from working miracles in people's lives, including healing people. Some people thought in my previous video I was saying that God doesn't heal people or Jesus doesn't heal people. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is that these people are not conduits of Jesus' power and they are not healing anyone. Everything they do from healing the blind and the deaf are all just old school faith healer tricks. There's a great documentary called Miracles for Sale that somebody actually showed me after they watched my first video. It's about a world famous magician named Darren Brown who the entire thing is just him discrediting and disproving and showing how he's actually able to replicate what faith healers do, even with people with actual disabilities. This woman has been deaf since she was born. She doesn't know what it is to hear. 27. She can't hear. She needs to lip read to hear what I'm saying. How many clicks? Three. Jesus. Jesus. She's no longer lip reading. Now compare that clip of the woman whose hearing was restored to this clip. This one's worse than the other. 70% hearing loss, 40% in this one. Jesus. Have I just really healed you of deafness? No. You can't really hear if I, without your hearing aid, if I face the other way. Mm, but all not. the clicks and everything, you can hear anyway. Yeah. You are moderately deaf, but you're essentially hearing impaired. Hmm. Yes. There's 70% hearing loss, 40% in this one. But guys, here's the thing. I know I could be wrong. All it would take is one piece of verifiable evidence. And because I'm a generous guy, I thought I could help with that. Which is why when I went to the church, I brought my good friend Andy, who has cerebral palsy and can't walk. I could not think of a single better person who could use a miracle. Honest to God, one of the nicest guys I've ever met and nobody more deserving. It's the perfect chance for the church to not only prove me wrong, but heal somebody who really deserves it in the process. I received a text message from the church about a miracle revival night on Friday with the tagline, bring someone who needs a miracle. So that's exactly what I did. When we arrived to the church, we were surprised by the lack of people there. In all the videos that they post, the church is always overflowing with people, but when we were there, there were maybe 20 people tops. They ushered us over to registration where they wanted us all to fill out visitor information cards, which is not uncommon for churches at all. What was uncommon was that when we explained that this was our first time there and we really just wanted to watch a service and requested that we not give our personal information to them, they had to call somebody over to see if that was even allowed. Um, it wasn't. Because this is our first time, we're kind of just wanting to check it out. Is it okay if we don't put our addresses and stuff? Is that cool? Um, we ask that you do put it on for our uh, first time. Okay. What, can I do it for all of us? Um, we usually, are they allowed to do just one or do they usually ask for all of us? They met us halfway and allowed me to fill out one card with everybody's information on it. We had pre-assigned aliases going in just in case that happened. I also provided the address for Sacred Heart Hospital on the off chance that they send a miracle worker to my home. We attempted to just sit in the back corner and just watch a service and whatever happens, happens. But they wouldn't let us. This way. Is it okay if we kind of sit on the side? We were just wanting to check out the church. Is it okay if we kind of just sit on the side a little bit? Um, well, because we're filming, we do center on uh, Sunday, but we, we can get them right into a... Um, like on the side there? Yeah. Would that be all right? Yeah. Right here? Fine. They explained that they film from the middle aisle directly, so they said that we all had to sit in the middle so they could get like a shot making it look more full. It's more manipulation tactic to make the congregation look bigger than it is. We agreed, and it wasn't maybe five minutes until two very large gentlemen with, the, uh, with a shirt font that said protector, not security, protector, he came over and asked me to step outside. Step outside? 
none of us wanted to be separated, so instead of just me or just me and Matt going out, um, we decided to wait for everybody and go as a group. Okay, we're going to have to ask you guys to leave. Okay. Yeah, that, that's fine. Okay. There was no explanation and we did not feel safe enough to stick around and find out. And guys, I could not make this up if I tried. Like as we were leaving, being kicked out of this church, a couple of kids were riding their bikes through the parking lot when the guy who kicked us out said, hey, if, you, if we catch you kids riding your bikes through the parking lot again, we're gonna take you to jail. Did he say that if those kids ride through here again, we'll take them to jail? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> what? You can't make it this easy for me. As we were leaving, some staff members were also taking pictures of our license plates. They were just trying to get plates. As we were pulling out of the parking lot, he was in, I saw him in the rear view mirror taking pictures of our yeah. license plate. Yeah, we, we saw, saw that. that too. So we went to a service and tried to see if my friend would get healed, and that didn't happen, but at least we tried. Where I talk about evidence and facts and what I would consider to be extremely obvious, the leaders talk more about feelings and subjectivity. Feelings, open-ended prophecies that are designed for you to fill in the blanks. For instance, if I had enough showmanship and I said that the Lord had a prophetic word for you, he says in the days to come, maybe even this week, that you're going to have an obstacle that you're not sure if you're going to be able to get through. You have not put your best days behind you. You may feel overwhelmed, but God has a message for those demons that wish to harm you. They will not prevail. You have not seen the best yet. The best is now. Whatever hardships or burdens that the devil throws at you this week coming up, the Lord put this on my mind. You will overcome. During your work week or your relationship, there's always gonna be some type of roadblock or an inconvenience or whatever. We know that because this is life. If you were to get a flat tire this week, it's not because I'm a prophet. You getting into a fight with your spouse does not mean that the devil of divorce is infiltrating your marriage. It means you asked your husband three times to unload the dishwasher and he still hasn't done it and you got a little frustrated. I see you on this one, ladies. And with the tire or your relationship, you move on, you fix the tire, you talk out your problems. This is the exact same technique a psychic uses. You know how we can all tell that psychics are frauds? It's because none of them has ever won the lottery. You know how we can tell these faith healers are frauds? It's because we have three full hospitals within throwing distance of each other. And I've never seen a Harfouche wandering the halls of the hospital that I work at. Or maybe it's because the guy in the wheelchair that Harfouche taught how to take people up out of wheelchairs isn't doing a good job yet. I know I mentioned that guy in my last video, but it just gets me every time because I could not think of any better way to illustrate my point than this. I had someone reach out to me after the first video telling me that he used to go there and about how it really messed him up when he was there. He didn't go into any detail at the time and I didn't ask him to. When I was researching for this video, I made sure to message him and I asked him if he would be willing to do an interview for me. I offered to conceal his identity, change his voice, whatever he wanted. He said he would think about it and get back to me. Well, a few weeks passed, I didn't hear anything, so I messaged him and this was his response. I have been thinking about what I'd say and I don't think I'm in a healthy place yet where I can talk about them and it not take me back to that place. It was a very dark and manipulative and painfully scarring time in my life that fundamentally changed who I am and my spirituality, your, bas your basic PTSD. And right now I just wanna move on. At this point, I don't even care if my face was blurred out. I just hate them and I'm not my best self when I talk about them yet. Maybe one day, who knows? They break families and steal lives and destroy your identity and your ability to trust yourself. Dark and manipulative and painfully scarring time of my life that fundamentally changed who I am. Way to go. He did refer me to somebody else who used to go to the church. Now this guy did agree to be interviewed with me on the contingency that I conceal his identity as well. We talked for like two hours and there was a lot of stuff to unpack there. So I'm gonna be using a little bit more of our interview near the end of this video. I have a degree in psychology and I worked at a psychiatric facility for about four years. Once you start seeing people with various diagnoses and histories, you begin to see patterns. I don't know if Christian or Robin Harfouche have ever visited a psychiatrist before, but Robin in particular has a long history of religious preoccupation. This started in her childhood and ranged from aliens abducting her to being the chosen one of the new age religion that was chosen by their gods and spirits to now being a, a prophet for all of us that was handpicked and chosen by god himself 
This has been constant throughout her entire life. It's always been some type of religious or supernatural thing that has, that now Christianity is the only thing that's just really stuck now. A spirit guide appeared to me and began to tell me that uh, I had been selected or chosen. He looked like um, um, an alien, kind of a cross between an alien and an angel. It's not a far thing to be chosen by new age spirits to now being chosen by God. The only difference is that it's a lot easier to sell being chosen by God than being chosen by the spirit of Marilyn Monroe. I don't know, something stupid like that. And this voice said, um, my name is Marilyn. I'm a good spirit. Was it Marilyn Monroe? Yes. Marilyn Monroe? That's not entirely fair. They did say it was a spirit guide that took on the form of Marilyn Monroe because that's more believable, I guess. I talked about Robin's condition in the last video about how she had 23 doctors tell her that she would never walk again. But in an interview later, she said that she always could walk. She could walk, she could shuffle a little bit. She talks about that experience a little bit more on this program. A 25 foot tall door, utility door that weighed 150 pounds came off its hinges and um, hit me in the back of the skull like a hammer at supernatural speed. Um, Everything is supernatural. Why not just say a large industrial door hit me in the head and put me in a coma? Why add supernatural speed? Did they measure it? Was it moving 100 miles an hour? How would we know? What was your prognosis? At the end, after mm. rehabilitation for several months, um, they called it post-concussive syndrome. Post-concussive syndrome. The lingering effects of post-concussive. I don't see quadriplegia or paraplegia as a side effect. Most patients with post-concussion syndrome fully recover. PCS usually goes away within three months, but there have been cases where it has lasted a year or longer. I mean, but would you be healed eventually through medicine? Or? Yes. When it comes to Christian Harfouche, authority, status, and title are the most important things. Do you love me? Yes! I love you more. Sit down. Like, it's crazy just how important they are. He, he goes by the title Apostle Doctor, for God's sake. It wasn't until I got my hands on his martial arts DVD that I realized he also goes by the title Grand Master. He literally refers to himself as Grand Master Apostle Dr. Harfouche. If you look up his About Me section on their website, he has some pretty amazing claims, like this one about how by the end of the 90s, he had personally laid hands on over one million people. According to his website, he was 21 when he was called by God in 1976. Let's take a liberal guess and say that by the 90s, they mean the end of 1999, giving him 23 years to physically touch 1 million people. Get out your pencils, class. How many people would Christian Harfouche personally have to lay hands on per day to touch 1 million people in 23 years? Christian Harfouche would have to personally lay hands on 116 people per day, every single day, for 23 years to do this. That's 3,623 people per month for 276 consecutive straight months. Some of these, I don't know, brags, they're just so strange to me, like this one. Dr. Harfouche has been hosted on international television networks including CNN, TBN, blah blah blah. He's produced the television program Miracles Today, which was broadcasted five days a week to a potential viewing audience of five billion people. A potential viewing audience of five billion people? This YouTube video has a potential audience of 7.5 billion people. Should I put this on my resume? He is preaching thousands of hours and maintaining a global itinerary that routinely reaches and exceeds 200,000 air miles each year. 200,000 air miles. It's a miracle, people. I wonder who pays for that. And then there's the anointing. He's anointed, his wife's anointed, their dog is anointed. That's, that, they'd never claim that, that's just a joke. I mentioned last time how they say that God has increased their jurisdiction in the church and all these other very bold claims. Here's the big thing with this whole God's anointed thing that I discovered very quickly in the comments section last time. Not only do some of these people really believe that he's God's anointed, but also because of that, me criticizing him is akin to criticizing the Holy Spirit. There's a verse in the Old Testament that they use to threaten my eternal soul. It says, touch not my anointed, do my prophets no harm. How this church and churches like it choose to interpret this whole God's anointed thing is this. The words of our apostle doctor cannot be challenged 
and the preaching cannot be questioned. The actual context of this verse involves David remembering Abraham and God remembering all the Israelites and those being his chosen holy people and blah, 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 blah. This is such a red flag for a cult, I mistook it for the communist flag. There is a certain criteria to knowing whether or not you're in a cult and feel free to play along at home. Number one, a charismatic leader. This is a living leader who has no meaningful accountability and becomes the single most defining element of the group and its source of power and authority. The Lord has given me authority and Dr. Robin authority check number two the group displays excessively zealous and unquestioning commitment to its leader and whether he is alive or dead regards his belief system ideology and practices as the truth as law this is the only things that you need is our teaching it's so cultish that no. everywhere we're right everyone else is wrong that's definition check number three Questioning, doubt, and dissent are discouraged or even punished. Check. Number four, mind-altering practices such as meditation, chanting, speaking in tongues in this case, are used in excess and serve to suppress doubts about the group and its leaders. Check. Number five, the group is elitist, claiming a special exalted status for itself, its leaders, and its members. Am I, am I making this up or isn't that what he said? Check. Number six, the group has a polarized us versus them mentality, which may cause conflict with the wider society. They are told that when a person leaves the church without the quote unquote blessing, which by the way, doesn't happen. They've been told you don't associate with them don't talk to them, they're dangerous. Have they been told that if you leave the church, bad things will happen oh, to you? Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's a check. Number seven, the leader is not held accountable to any authorities. Check. Number eight, this one, um, I'm, I hate how accurate this one is. The group teaches or implies that its supposedly exalted ends justify whatever means it deems necessary. This may result in members participating in behaviors or activities they would have considered reprehensible or unethical before joining the group. His family left the church, and then it was a murder-suicide. As a result of them leaving the church? As a result of them leaving the church, they, they left the covering of the church. Like God's protection? Right. Satan was allowed to have free reign, you know, with that film about, you know, all that, and then the end result was uh, the husband ended up shooting, everyone and then killed himself. Number nine, the group is preoccupied with making money. Check, 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 check. Number 10, members are expected to devote inordinate amounts of time to the group and group related activities. Check. <laughs> What made me want to do this video in the first place was the people in the church. Christians love to talk about what God puts on people's heart, but God put these people on my heart. Ugh. I'm so denominational. Ugh. I'm an imperfect person and definitely not a perfect Christian, but for many people in this church, and maybe for the people who are watching this right now who believe the leaders of this church, I may be the only person that is legitimately attempting to reach out to you. Despite what the church or my questionable sense of humor may tell you, I am not your enemy. I am a Christian just like you. I am not attempting to get you to turn away from God, from Jesus or the church or anything like that. I believe most of you are there in good faith. The only difference is, is that I don't feel the need to brag about my achievements or try to convince you that I'm somehow closer to God than you are, and therefore my words have more weight. The living God that is in me, that steers my conscience, that put this church on my heart, lives in you as well. I don't need a personal vacation to heaven or some grand gesture of anointing for God to communicate or influence or impact me, and you don't either. I could dig into these people all day. I could point out that from the moment I entered the church, they gave me this pamphlet where every other page is a request to buy a $400 CD set, a $600 DVD set, or just straight up a request to give us a $1,000 donation. I could delve deep into their questionable financial history or these legal court documents about how American Express sued them for $190,000 worth of unpaid credit card bills while simultaneously living in this $1.3 million house 
all at the expense of their very sick and very in need of healing congregation. I could talk about the moral emptiness of manipulating people who are only searching for Jesus and then instead giving them this sleight of hand faith in your anointed position in God's kingdom instead. Now I could talk about the lasting psychological harm of the good people who are trying to leave your church and your threats to remove the protection of God if they even dared to. There has been things said where it's been like, you know, if they don't watch out, Satan will come in and their marriage could end. I could talk about the myriad of scriptures that tell people to watch out for people like the Harfushes. The miracles, the signs, even in the name of Jesus, is not indicative of God's holy anointing. And about how Jesus told us to distinguish between the legitimate versus the fraud is the fruit that they produce, the good that they do for the world, for the community, about how they love thy neighbor, and about how the fruit that this church produces is rotten to the core. I could talk about the people who gave everything they had to this church in good faith with the promise of being rewarded tenfold or a hundredfold only to receive nothing in return, at least not yet. Does, does the church preach prosperity gospel? You give and you'll get ten times more type thing? And for many members in the congregation, none of this will matter. This will all fall on deaf ears. But for those of you who will listen, that are thinking about attending this church or who may already be attending this church, look elsewhere. We're in Pensacola. There are literally dozens of churches per square mile. <laughs> I will be putting a list of churches in the description below that you could at least try out. I've been to most of these churches and some of them are off the suggestion of friends. I may not agree with every denominational difference and we can duke that out in the comments or something later, but these are all Jesus loving churches. And please feel free to comment a church that you would recommend as well. And I can't stress this enough, if you are looking to serve a population of people with disabilities in our local community, I could not recommend The Seven Project more. The Seven Project acts as a non-medical adaptive fitness facility, primarily serving those with physical disability through exercise, nutrition, and support. I'm not affiliated with them or being sponsored by them in any way. I don't think that the owner even really knows me. I just know that they're a great facility. And I'll make sure to link their website down below so that you can donate either your money or your time. If if you're actually looking to be a part of somebody's miraculous journey to recovery and self-acceptance, this is a great opportunity for you to be the salt and the light of the world. I got pretty overwhelmed with comments last time, even to the point where YouTube was no longer notifying me when I was getting them. I can't really get into long theological debates about why I'm going to burn in hell for all eternity, even though I wish that I could, but I'll try and respond to what I can. To the members of the church, because this seems to be a recurring thing. No, I don't love Satan. I do not claim Satan. I'm not cool with Satan. We're not on speaking terms. Um, yes, I know I have a very nerdy wall. I have a very nerdy room here. That is true. Um, no, I don't worship anything on the wall. I don't worship Spider-Man. Um, these characters, they're from a TV show. Don't worship them either. And yes, I believe in the power of prayer and I believe that Jesus heals people. So let's just get all that out right now. And thank you to everyone who helped me with this follow-up. Thank you for watching and God bless.